Okay, second try at vector related word problem. Here we go. So, an airplane an airplane is flying on a compass heading, also known as a bearing, of 170 degrees at 460 miles per hour. A wind is blowing with the bearing 200 degrees at 80 miles per hour. It wants us to find the component form of the velocity of the airplane, and it also wants us to find the actual ground speed and direction of the airplane. So, we are going to draw a picture. And with compass headings, uh, that's kind of the initial tough part of this. Whenever I do compass headings, I like to draw a little coordinate plane thing here. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my vector where it goes. So my airplane's going to be red. My airplane, go away. My airplane is going at a bearing of 170 degrees. Remember that bearings start zero at north and then go clockwise. So if I start here is zero and I go around 170, deg 170 degrees, then that is about like this. Except I'm going to make it longer because the airplane is going really fast. Okay. So that is my airplane vector. I went 170 degrees around, which let's think about some maybe important things here. This angle right here, if I went around 170 degrees, I have 10 degrees left. And so that means that this angle here would be uh, 90 minus 10, which is 80. Okay, so I might use those later. The magnitude of this vector is the speed, which is 460 miles per hour. Now, a wind is blowing with the bearing 200 degrees at 80 miles per hour. So now, I'm going to put that vector at the end of this first vector. So, I'm going to draw a new compass here at the end, because I'm doing a compass bearing. I'm going to make a new vector for wind. Let's make it blue. No, let's not, because I drew in blue. Let's make it green. Okay, Two hundred. a bearing of 200 starts zero here, goes around 180, and then goes 20 more, so that puts it right here. And this vector should be much shorter than the other vector, because, I mean, 460 compared to 80 miles per hour, right? So the important part of the angles here is that this angle, I went around 180 plus 20 to get 200. So that one's 20 degrees. And on this side, that is 70 degrees. Okay, so, and then that vector is 80 miles per hour. All right, so the thing that's going on here is that the airplane is trying to fly this direction. The wind is acting on it this direction. If we add these two vectors together, we get the actual speed and the direction that the airplane is going. Okay, and so basically we end up with a resultant vector that we will make purple, because purple is awesome, that starts here and goes to here. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have to figure out the direction angle and the speed of that, and it's going to be great. But let's start with A. Find the component form of the velocity of the airplane. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted... Okay, forget it. Okay, so let's find the component form of the velocity of the airplane. We're going to do that over here. We're going to say the magnitude is 460 times cosine of the direction angle. So this is where these angles matter because this uh, vector, this red vector, has a trig angle of, I would go around 270 plus 10 and get 280. Cosine of 280 degrees, sine of 280 degrees. Okay, so I had to get the actual trig angle to get around to there. Okay, because I was given compass bearings, but I want to use trig angles. If I distribute that 460 and I solve, that's going to give me the answer to A, which is the um, 
velocity of the airplane in component form. So in my calculator, make sure you're in degree mode. 460 cosine 280 is 79.88. And 460 sine 280 is negative 453.01. Okay, and this is the airplane. And that's the answer to A. Now, we, even though it doesn't ask us, we need to do the same thing with the wind. And we need to say, okay, it is going... 80 miles per hour, that's the magnitude. Its direction is, if I start with a trig angle of 0 here and I go around, that's 180 plus 70, which is 250. And sine 250. So then, let's figure out what that is. That is... Negative 27.36 AD sine 250. Negative 75.18. And so this is the component form of the wind vector. The vector for the actual ground speed and direction of the airplane is these two vectors added together. Okay, so that's what we're going to do is add airplane plus wind and get that component form. So 79.88 plus a negative 27.36 which is the same as subtracting in case you didn't know 52.52 .52. and negative 453.01 plus a negative 75.18 is negative 528.28. So this is the component form, but we want the speed and direction. Okay, so the speed part is easy because we just need to use the Pythagorean theorem on this component form. Remember, if you're putting negatives into the Pythagorean theorem, you want to put that in parentheses when you square it because the negative needs to go away especially in this case we have such a big number being squared that if I don't put parentheses I'm going to end up with it telling me that that's not a real number so this is 530.88 it's the magnitude which was in miles per hour so that's part of our answer for B now let's find the direction angle so keep in mind that this vector that we ended up with is going a little bit to the right and is going down really fast kind of like this situation okay and so whenever we uh, whenever we find the inverse tangent we use inverse tangent of 528.28 over 52.52. When we do that, that's going to give us this angle right here. And so for this problem, it wants the direction of the airplane, and the direction angles they gave us were bearings. So we want to reciprocate and give them bearings back. So whenever I type this in to the calculator, the inverse tangent, I get 84.32 degrees, but what I want is the angle from zero to here. So that's 90, wow, um, that's ridiculous, 90 plus 84.32. So that is... 174.32 so that's the angle that we end up with um, 
I was going to say some stuff about some of the other word problems that are in the section. After this word problem, which is 43, it's not this exact one, but it's similar. Um, they are a little bit easier, but the next problem has a box um, and an incline. We've got an incline and we're moving a, a box along the incline. So the box is like right here and we are pushing it up the incline and it, it asks about what the component form of this vector would be. And so keep in mind that if this was a flat surface with a box and that, and if you were pushing it with a force of two pounds, cause you're kind of a wimp. I don't actually know how much that is. You're pushing it with a weight, of, with a force of two pounds. Okay, you're pushing horizontally, which means that your component form will have all of the force being in your X and none of it being in your Y because you're not pushing it up and down at all. You're just moving it to the right. You're moving it horizontally. And so that's what the component form of these vectors is talking about is how much am I moving each direction? So when we have um, real life situations with force like this where we're trying to move a box up an incline, the X component is what am I actually pushing horizontally to move the box and then what am I pushing uh, up with basically to fight the fact that gravity is pushing down on me trying to prevent me from moving this box up the hill. So I hopefully that kind of shed some light on that problem but if not then it's okay, whatever.